Hello, my name is John Cowan. As you can see from this slide, this is the first time this talk has been given. To talk a little bit about the talk, I normally do this kind of talk interactively. So you can ask me questions pretty much whenever you want to. I can ask you questions. I can see and hear how the talk is going over, which I can't in a recording. And if I screw up, it's less embarrassing. I just correct myself and move on. I would hate to tell you how many times I've had to re-record this talk so far. As for me, I'm the chair of R7RS Large. Our charter is to make necessary changes to R7RS Small, basically in the form of enhancements, to make it suitable for modern software development on a portable platform. Right now you can do a lot of library development in R7RS Small. But writing whole applications is hard because there's just not enough underpinnings for them yet. We will trade off some implementation flexibility. Right now an R7RS implementation is perfectly entitled to crash your program if you ask it for the car of one. Um, for, we want to have a stronger contract with users since an, it's a standard is basically a contract with users. And we will also try to heal the R6RS, R7RS split as far as possible. The original design was pretty straightforward. Write surfies, portable or not. I wrote a bunch of them. Other people have written many. Uh, collect them into ballots. I did that. Uh, schemers then vote on the ballots. And by schemers, I basically mean anyone who, who wants to and signs up for it. Whatever surfies pass, get into the standard. And we keep iterating until we're done where done is a somewhat undefined term. But there were problems. The process is taking too long, and in addition, it's hard to maintain consistency over a multi-year process. And a number of schemers pushed back. When Arthur Gleckler saw that I had labeled this slide the rebellion, he thought, uh-oh. But uh, later on, he decided that it was probably appropriate. So after listening to the rebellion go on for a while on mailing list, uh, I proposed a compromise which was accepted, namely to partition the R7RS large effort into multiple subcommittees. So I'm going to be talking about those committees and, and what I know about their agendas right now, which is all very tentative and subject to change. If anyone wishes to join a committee, please do so. We always need more warm buddies. Okay, so Committee F will be working on the extension of R7RS small to provide a foundation on which the rest of the language can be built. So it will be concerned with what might, might be called language features. For example, R7RS small has syntax rules, but not syntax case. So Committee F will look at incorporating syntax case because it's fundamentally a language feature. Committee E will look at environmental features, including I.O., but not, but not limited to I.O., that can't be implemented portably. Committee C will be the Cleanup and Consistency Committee, which will reconcile the, the surfies we already have. Committee B, for batteries included, will provide portable libraries that it thinks are important enough to have in the standard. Surfie 1, the all in Shivers' list library, is the obvious case. Committee P will arrange for and oversee publication of the final results. So here's some of Committee F's agenda items. Lexical syntax extensions. Right now, we have syntax for general vectors and for byte vectors, but we don't have syntax for, say, uh, unsigned 16-bit integer vectors or 32-bit floating point vectors or other such things, although R6RS does provide libraries for them. Similarly, multidimensional arrays, which are not in R6RS, don't have syntax either. So they will be considering whether to make lexical syntax extensions. They will look at the R6RS syntax case and identify our syntax features and probably just incorporate them as is, subject to Committee C, which I'll talk about later, and some kind of R6RS compatible condition system. We already have an exception system, which is the same between R6RS and R7RS small, but we don't have a system of conditions yet in R7RS small. F will be responsible for primitives that allow B's libraries to be implemented more efficiently. Single inheritance records along R6RS lines will be incorporated. 
or possibly surfing 99 lines. Delimited continuations. Everybody says, why are there no delimited continuations in the standard? So this is our opportunity to get them in. Syntax parameters are a compromise between hygienic and non-hygienic macros. A syntax parameter is like an ordinary parameter, except it's syntax. You can change the binding of syntax within, lexi within a, a given dynamic scope. Um, immutable data types. Right now, we have only mutable data types, uh, ex with the exception of records that don't happen to have any mutator functions. Uh, but we really need a lot more than that. In particular, there's something called the string mess. I could give a talk as long as this one just about that, so I won't talk about it more. Committee F will be responsible for merging errata uh, and for working out optional safety guarantees. Right now, R6RS provides full safety guarantees. R7RS provides no safety guarantees. Okay, Committee E will look at a system of R6RS type port I.O., which rather than being in parallel with the R5RS, R7RS traditional port I.O., will be uh, built on top of it, and, but will provide all the features that R6RS uh, wants. There will be some facility for threads, possibly SURFI 18, maybe only a subset of SURFI 18, it's not clear yet, uh, and something for sockets. Timers are an important feature, and we should have them. Um, there will be a POSIX library, but not all 1,100 plus APIs. We will be looking at keeping it as portable as possible, and portability nowadays mostly means Windows, although that may there may become other things that are necessary to be portable to as well. Okay, channels and concurrent ML provide a higher level interface than just locks. And that's and monitors, and that's something that we that committee E will be looking at. Now committee E won't be designing terminal user interfaces, but it may be providing it will be providing a substrate for them. Uh, this is where this allows you to portably put the terminal in raw mode or cooked mode, you know, or change its various other POSIX parameters. Uh, there will be some kind of graphics system, possibly via EZD, which is this beautiful little. Um, server written by Joel Bartlett that interfaces between a scheme program and X11, and it could also be made to work with SDL as well, and provides everything you might want as far as um, drawing lines and curves and so on, but also higher level objects. Uh, rather than sort of fiddling with widgets, you just draw things. Um, you can communicate with EZD over a pipe or internally because it talks as expressions and not binaries or or random text. Some kind of polling and multiplexing facility to handle uh, the select poll and e-poll system calls will also be a committee E issue. Okay, committee C has a lot to do, and I've just mentioned a few things here. Uh, currently, R7RS made some extensions to syntax rules that makes them incompatible with R6RS syntax case. So R6RS syntax case will need to be extended to handle those cases. Uh, list folds versus vector folds. Uh, a fold function in list for lists works like cons. That is to say, the, uh, the element comes first and the accumulator comes second. For hysterical reasons, vectors go the other way. The accumulator comes first and the element comes second. And because surfies copy from other surfies, we have this division right through the entire system of data structures that are foldable. So we'll clean that up. Um, keyword arguments. Keyword arguments are nice, um, but nobody has ever been able to come up with anything that will be that, that will handle both different styles of existing keyword arguments, and there are several, uh, plus a reasonable degree of portability. So Committee C will be investigating, making those consistent. Uh, right now, R7RS small talks a lot about is an error, which means undefined behavior. So all those cases will be analyzed to Committee C to see where they should be changed to an error is signaled, um, either for sure or in all cases, or only when the system is running in safe mode. 
there will be many, many individual tickets as well. So this is just a handful. All right, Committee B will be looking at everything from the original plan that's portable. And by portable, I mean that it will work in the F or E languages, or the F plus E language. We still won't know exactly where to stop, hence we'll still have the same voting structure. Currently, I have seven ballots. Two contain surfies that just need to be voted on. Two contain pre-surfies, which need to be formatted and put through the surfie uh, vetting process. And then the remaining three ballots uh, lack implementations and volunteers to implement them are, are solicited and would be grateful and their help gratefully accepted. Okay, this is half of the Committee B agenda, more or less, and I'm just going to talk about a handful of them. Okay, so by random pairs, I mean random access pairs, and really what I mean is pairs that make up random access lists. They allow n log n access to lists. Okay, a multiple box is a box that holds multiple values. Ephemerons are key value pairs where the value holds the key weekly from the garbage collector's point of view. So that normally if the if a value is held has the key inside of it, then the it's not possible for the value ever to become garbage because the key and value are holding one another. So in an ephemeron, as soon as there are no other references to the key, the entire ephemeron can be broken. Lazy lists have a generator procedure in the tail. That is to say, the uh, they are potentially improper lists with the generator uh, in the tail position. Flex vectors are mutable, continuous, and dynamic vectors. They're what Python calls lists and JavaScript calls arrays. Uh, byte strings is a library. is not a separate data type. It's a library for byte vectors that allows them to be treated more or less as strings with an accompanying notation or lexical syntax. Uh, okay, here's the other half. Here, generic dictionaries. A dictionary is a type class object, basically a record of procedures. So you can pass the correct, the correct dictionary type object and then a dictionary, such as an A-list or a hash table or a immutable mapping. And uh, then you can apply functions like dict, re dict ref and dict set and so forth and so on. If star uh, is, a, is a variant of if that allows any number of arguments past, past one. So it's if star p, then one else one, then two else two. It's kind of like cond, except with um, uh, but handles a simpler case. It's an extension of if to do what cond does, in essence. String interpolation is almost what you expect from other languages, except it uses a dictionary rather than the lexical environment, which is very problematic, so we don't do that. Generalized S expressions are the product of a, a separate project called Twinjo. Uh, they come in two forms, a textual form uh, and an ASN1 binary form. They are highly portable, by which I mean that they can be implemented in almost any language. So they allow you to communicate complex data in either way. Dijkstra arrays have arbitrary upper and lower bounds and can grow at either end. So there's something like flex vectors, but different. Um, in particular, when you insert, uh, when you add something at the bottom, at the beginning of a flex vector, every all the other indices get renumbered. Whereas when you, if you have a Dijkstra array from zero to five and you insert something at the beginning, its index is negative one. Okay, immutable vectors use a uh, regular immutable vector as a backing store, and keep a tree structured log of mutations, so that as long as you don't make another mutation you can get O of N access, excuse me, O of 1 access to the vector. But then when you refer to something that is not the current state of the tree, it has to, to do the mutations following the tree, and then you get O of 1 access again. Okay, generic functions are the most important part of object orientation, in my view. And 
we'll be looking at a couple of different possibilities there. And then monads, applicative functors, and functors will also be type class objects in the style of dictionaries. We may further do sequences and monoids. Well, that's the prepared talk. Thank you. Any questions?